Hi there guys and welcome to another Train Sim 2021 video. Sorry, just trying to work out new camera positions at the moment. They're not fixed in and the new overlay isn't fixed, but you get where we're going. Right, okay, so been a very, very busy week for me. Um, I've had loads of work being done on the house, which hasn't been much help, which has meant I haven't had power, hence we haven't had that many videos. So, uh, I've been desperate to have a look at this. This is uh, the Rivet Games Suburban Glasgow Northwest Springburn, Springburn to Helensborough. Uh, so let's start out with the first bits of this and get this out of the way before I go any further. This route was originally available as a freeware route. Um, it had quite a long list of assets. Uh, a guy called Ian Mackay has been making it for ooh, a long, 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 long time. Um and it was by far one of my favourite freeware routes uh, that was out and about. It was sometimes a bit of a pig to get running and there was some really clunky way you had to go through the workshop to get around some other bits and pieces. So you had to like download a bit from the workshop, download a bit from the website, delete the bit from the workshop, get the bit from the website. It was really, really complicated. Uh, and wasn't always the most reliable of things. But I still really enjoyed it. I used to use this, and those of you that follow the channel for a while will know... That running Suburban Glasgow for me was always a, a test once I've done a reinstall. Um, so it is a follow on from that. Now, I haven't kept up to date with the dev diaries or anything like that because I want to see if I particularly I'm going to notice the bits that have been put in. I know assets have been added. Um, I don't know what assets they are. All I know is that there have been some additional assets added into it. So it's not just a clone of the original freeware version. Um, the freeware version was very Kuju heavy. So that's one thing I'm going to be looking at is is, is is more, has some of the Kuju stuff been updated, changed, modified, that sort of thing. Um, now, there's going to be a lot of people, and I'm sure there's already threads that I've just skimmed over um, the past couple of days, and even before when this was first announced. So people go, but this is a freeware route, and it's now payware. Yes. Yes, it is. And I don't think this is the first time that's happened either. Um, but this is the first time it's happened to a route that, that really affects me as such. Am I that fussed about it? Depends on the quality. Um, already, the other thing I'm going to put a caveat in on this is I'm not reviewing the stock. Let's be honest, the stock that this comes with is, is poor, to say the least. Um, I, I don't think it brings, adds any... Uh, it doesn't it doesn't take away because everybody's going to swap it out anyway with the ap stuff um and even for people who haven't got a lot in train sim i don't, I don't really think this is this is adding anything extra so from that side of things with the stock i'm not going to go down the lines with that uh the dtg model for the 320 um was questionable to say the least, the 158, uh, it's the old 158. Uh, it, it, for me, it seems like a bit of a missed opportunity. But we'll carry on talking about that as we get going. I've started this at uh, Mogai, basically because this is where um, a good majority of my family live. It is where I end up literally being, uh, when I get the train, used to get the train up to, especially when my grandma was alive, uh, up to Scotland, this would have been my, my final destination. And then I'd have been picked up and uh, driven either down to sort of Strathblane or that sort of way, or the house in, in Blainfield, we used to say as well. Uh, but my family actually own a, a tea room in Mulgai. Uh, my, my uncle owned a tea room in there. And yeah, so this route, for me, again, has got a real personal connection. So I'm going to try and not let that phase me a bit. Uh, and I'm going to give you my honest sort of sort of, sort of of look. Really not, not convinced by the sky either at this precise moment in time. But anyway... Let's stop waffling on and get going. Right, welcome to this early morning stopping service to Bathgate today. You'll be driving this train as far as Belgrove. Open the doors, allow the passengers to board the train. That's fine, let's do that then, shall we? What have they got the DRA on? Because it looks like it could be backwards. DRA's backwards in the API there, that's handy. Right, let's get some lights on. Right, so for those that... that <laughs> uh, it doesn't take away from the route. It doesn't take away from the route for me. Right, well, guy, station know pretty well. It looks like it's 
looks like a, 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 a representation of a guy. I, I'm not seeing massively drastic changes to the freeware one. Um, I don't know. Inside here looks nice. Oh, I like those. This is sort of a weird thing that happened in Scotland was steam trains with, with plants in them. It's quite good. They've got like the train ready to start posts and stuff down on here. That would have been nice to see. And I mean, in real life, this is a Tesco. sort of here and there's like a quick fit and stuff over that side isn't there okay passion now board the train please proceed to 1724 to the next timetable stop at Hillfoot let's check out how bad my sounds are So I always think there's sort of an acceptable level within freeware that you can sort of deal with some of the uh, the, the 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 less visually enticing parts of routes because it's freeware. Um, now it's payware. Let's let's have a look and see what we find. So I'm just going to get my mic right because this train is incredibly loud by the sounds of things, and I don't want it to drown you guys out. I was speeding very, very heavily there. I didn't even realize. Um, Are we even going to make it for this stop? What's also weird is if we ever drove up to my grandma's, we'd always stop at this garage. My dad was always awful at buying things, uh, so he'd always stop at the garage just to hill foot here and get um, a bunch of flowers and a bottle of wine. Awful, isn't it? Let's get our doors open. <laughs> the garage is even in, which is quite nice. That is quite nice. I like that. swap the bridges out. Now what I liked about the old bridges in the freeware version was they were dilapidated. Rusty like they are in real life. Um they might have they might have done them they might have painted them since I was last there but uh they were always like rotten. And the old version, the freeware version definitely got that right.
was that? Now, bonuses of this go into a uh, payware route are, of course, ease of access for everybody. So it means ease of installation and convenience. And I've got no problem with people paying for convenience. I really don't. Um, I'm more than happy for people to pay for convenience. Uh, now, because there's supposed to be some updated stuff in here as well, some updated station stuff, It'll probably be a bit more than just that. So Bear Stand, Bear Stand looks good. Again, I think I still haven't seen a lot of... sort of... assets being used for things that they weren't particularly intended for. And in a freeware route, I can kind of appreciate that. But then when you're paying for, I don't know. Can't even remember what the station building at Bears Den looks like, if I'm honest with you. But I don't think it looks like that uh, with the conservatories. Um, I was expecting at least to have custom stations. I won't lie. Um, what I really didn't want this to be was sort of just add in like three new things and, and two very dated bits of rolling stock and go twenty four ninety nine, please. But it is a, it's a big bit of route. It's a, it's, a, it's a network, is how I'd say it more than anything. And that I like. So actually, if you want to do it this really stupid way that people love to do it, and they'd have to do price per mile, it's pretty good, pretty good value. It's a big route. And considering you would have needed a significant list of DLC beforehand uh, to get that in the first place, even the freeware version, it still works out value for money. Westerton. This is Westerton. Looks like Western. It did in the free version. There's an awful lot of the freeware version hanging about in this. A bit, a bit more than I wanted to see, to be honest. Especially when we're talking detail so close to the track. Um... Foliage as well. I suppose it just, it just doesn't feel like a new route. Uh, that's, that's probably what it is. What is with this guy as well? 
it doesn't feel like a new route uh but that doesn't take away from the fact that this was an excellent freeware route in the first place so that's probably a good thing that's probably a good thing and for those of you that couldn't download it beforehand or anything like that you, you you're gonna have an amazing amount of fun with this route there is so much that can be done um bar the stock that they're using in this there's there's still some stock missing that will really make this the creme de la creme uh 334 is one that's just ultimately missing from the scotland sort of area and with the collaboration with rivet i was hoping they might have done a bit of stock to use what is often called <coughs> the worst uh bit of dtg dlc i'm not sure that was it, it's it's the, the the only thing that's really available to them to use if they weren't going to do their own. Um, but yeah, I don't know. And I know this section wasn't the big selling point. I do know that. But it is part of the route. And I think that'll probably cheese me off a little bit more if, like, some parts of the route have had more time spent on them than others, but you're selling it as a whole network. Add updates on signage and things like that. This is the bit I'm, I'm looking forward to getting down towards like Partick and uh, seeing if they've got like the, the transport museum in and stuff like that with the waterfront museum. Um, Finiston Crane, the SECC, the Armadillo thing, the Hydro. And to have my crane in a route, first of all. My dad told me he bought me the Finiston crane for my birthday when I was four once, so it's, it's my crane. I mean, there's been some definite touch ups. Is that bridge new as well? Has there been some work here as well, I think? So I think in real life this is like a... It's like a care home or something down this end, if I remember rightly. Or am I thinking further up? Can't remember.
Oh, I must just say, those of you that are going to go, how are you speeding in a career scenario without it um, moaning at you? Just turn scoring off. Uh, and that gets rid of all that jazz. Although my brain is linked to seeing that slightly yellow flashing box there. Which means that I speed ridiculously if I don't have it on. I'm also on all new settings for this, this video, so it's a new install of OBS and everything like that. So if there's anything that's weird or doesn't sound quite right, or doesn't look quite right, uh, let me know. What I will say about the camera at the top is that I'm actually on a brand new camera today, so the surround for the camera is meant for my old camera. Um, and I haven't had a chance to get that sorted before I've had to video this today, so that will get sorted. At least it's under the pantograph, the passenger view in this one. And you can go from side to side, like that. It just looks weird, man. So, the manual. Manual covers the trains, so the history is. Formed in 1960 as the amalgamation of various railways in the Glasgow area, the current North Clyde lines runs from Edinburgh Waverley to Helensburgh Central, with branches Springburn, Ballock and Morgai. Originally home to the venerable class 303, or the blue trains. And don't speed. The current iteration of the route showcases a wide variety of stuff, including many specials, often steam hauled, heading for the West Highland line. West of Glasgow, the line splits with one route taking the northerly course through the Glasgow suburbs of Annisland and Kingswood and Knightswood before merging with the southerly line, the Clyde Bank district of Dalmuir, and the southerly course passed through traditional industrial heartland of the Clyde Valley. After Clyde Bank, the route becomes distinctly rural before ending in the foothills of the Highlands at Helensborough. So the route features approximately 45 miles of route network. Uh, a class 320, a class 158, fully configured for quick drive, six career scenarios, 43 stations, extensive scenery and detailed catenary. Partick looks good. I like this. Oh, and I can see the transport museum already. Right, cool. Let's get the doors open here. We'll have a look around part of it, then we'll go and have a look down there. Should probably be seeing my crane for about now. It's like my head is in the compressor. Ah, oh, part of it's cool. Like the station. Like that. I know I'm not. I'm not going to go mad about exteriors or anything. Um, but there's some quite famous artwork around here as well. So one of the, over this side that would have been quite cool to have in. Right. Uh, just going to pause this now quickly to go and have a look down. Okay. It's fine for a bit of distant scenery. That's fine. It'd be nice to have had maybe some masts and the, the I can't remember the name of the ship that's at the back of it. Um, distinctly lacking my crane. It's a weird one, that. Considering it is like a massive icon of the centre of Glasgow.
think it was finally decommissioned in 1988 I think was the last time it did anything like officially built in 1920 something and considering it basically was built to lift railway locomotives onto ships Having that little bit of extra railway history and a route that literally goes past where you'd see it, it is a bit of an omission in my eyes. Not quite sure what's going on with the lighting with the, the hydro and the um, armadillo in that. The lighting on the, the, the sky anyway is a bit weird, so it might just be that. So this is another bit I'm really excited to see. That that wasn't... I'm a bit disappointed without the crane, but it's nice to see the numbers on the door for the SECC and that sort of thing. Again, a lot of you will have gone up there if you're into model railways from Model Rail Scotland, that sort of thing. But it's going down under here is what I'm looking forward to seeing now. So literally, there's that little bit of blurb about the actual route in the manual, and then the rest of it tells you about signals and driving the trains. So AWS and different... I mean, the signaling information seems very nice and detailed. This looks a lot better. This looks an awful lot better. If I remember rightly, the old the freeware version was the old yellow wall still. So yeah, there's about that much of the the blurb about the route, and then there's the route map. Which I'll show you guys now before we uh, disappear from here. So this is us about to come in to... Uh, this will be Queen Street here. Uh, you can, so we've got Summer Highland. <gasps> if they've included stuff that goes from Queen Street, have they done the overhead line work and have they extended the platforms? That would be a wasted opportunity if they haven't. I'll tell you that now. Um... And then all the way sort of over this way, I can't move the map. Oh, I can move the map because I'm paused. What's it doing? Oh, it is because it's paused. So it take you all the way up to um, Helensburg up here and Balak the other way. And Mulgai up that way, where we've come from. Well, no, we came from up here, Mulgai. Not up there. We'll have a pop up to the higher levels of Queen Street because it'd be a real missed opportunity if they haven't done that. I 
doesn't say what era it's set in, so it might have been set before Queen Street had been redone. It would just, considering that Queen Street has literally just been redone, it would have been a good opportunity to get a new one in. This looks a lot better. And considering this was a Thompson Interactive product in the first place, and which is part of Rivet Games, or same guys to do with Rivet Games, that they've had access to the source. Oh, did we have the Canon Galleries and like that? I think we did. Did we? Can't say I've ever looked. Uh, but that's, yeah. Okay. I'm sure there was a scenario from that level, from the high level as well, in that list. So it does have in the acknowledgements down here, uh, this route was conceived and developed by Ian Mackay. Rivet Games provided additional assets and assistance in order to make it available commercially. Street hasn't changed either from the freeware one. Slight overrun there. How slight? I don't know. Pretty, pretty, pretty not just slight. That was quite a fair whack of an overrun. I don't know, this is this is a conundrum for me. It's tricky. I love it because I love the route. And I love the freeware version, still do. So on one hand, making it payware and making it so much easier to install for people I think is great. On the other hand, do I think enough has changed for those of us that would have already had it to go out and buy it again? I mean, I've got no qualms in buying it. I don't, but for if I was to say this out for other people, I don't know. I think it's always... Oh, I'm supposed to do 30. It's always tricky... Taking a payware route, uh, taking a freeware route, and making it payware. I don't have a problem with it. And if I took the freeware version of this completely away, and this was just what I knew, and this was the first time we'd got this route, I'd have been happy as Larry with it. So from that point of view, 
It is what it is. It's a decent route. Does it still look quite dated in some areas? Yeah, it does. Uh, foliage especially. Um, and some of the use of, of older assets so close to the track does make it look a bit dated. Um, I think things like that are acceptable in freeware. Let me get away from that. But not particularly in payware. Um, it's really tough. Because I know Ian, I speak to Ian, and Ian's on my group, and he's a lovely bloke, and I know how much time and effort he's put into this route. And it's great. It is great. But as a commercial entity, I, I'm not going to lie. I'll be completely honest. I, I, I would have liked to have seen a bit more, uh, if I'm truly, truly honest. Uh, that might change when I drive up to, say, Helensborough or things like that. But then I think if you're going to do it on one part of the route, why not do most of the part of the route? And then I suppose they've had to prioritise. But there was already an existing route here. So realistically, you could pretty much prioritise redoing lots of things more than having to do track, terrain, all of that. You're just looking at asset creation and placement. I don't know. I like it. And if you haven't got Sperm Glasgow, uh, go and buy it. Um, I, I, I don't. I've got no qualms with that, especially at 19 as it is at the moment. F go and get it, definitely. Don't buy it for the stock. Uh, don't buy it for the scenarios that come with it. Uh, make sure you've got the AP321 and have a look on the third-party websites because I'm sure there'll be tons of scenarios going up for it very, very soon. Um, but, yeah, okay. I'm going to drive it more on stream tonight. So I will leave you guys here. And for you guys to go and have your own little uh, look at it and see what you think first look-wise. So, once again, guys, thanks ever so much for uh, joining me. I'll catch you again next time. Please feel free to like, share and subscribe. Head over to antomsonsim.com for all your latest and greatest train sim needs. Head over to Twitch on a Sunday and Wednesday from 7pm. And even though it's Friday today, a Friday night tonight from 7pm uh, over on Twitch. And uh, head over to the Facebook group. Keep an eye out what's going on in the real world railways and in all sorts of simulation stuff as well included in there. All right, guys, once again, I'll catch you next time.